Hello! If you have been following along in my journey of my live videos recently, you can see that the closet is... looks way better. <laughs> okay, it's there's always a weird thing that happens in the beginning of lives where it like is this little like time period of like five ten seconds where like I can't really tell if it's live yet, so who knows. So in my last live, <clears throat> I talked about polyvagal theory and went through like a long ass rant about it, um, going into a lot of the details, a lot of what we know about the nervous system at this point, which is semi-sophisticated, but not so, not so sophisticated. Like there's so much that we still have to uncover about the nervous system and you know it's never over we'll never know the full extent of everything obviously in the world about it um but there was a piece at the end of that talk that is so crucial and i want to just talk about that piece today because if you didn't make it through that whole talk or you know whatever i know everyone's attention spans are horrible nowadays so I really just wanted to bring attention to this specific thing and it's about self-responsibility when someone else gets triggered in your sphere in your space um you know a partner a friend a family member someone in public you know whatever happens if you're with someone who is basically like going into a stress response like a trauma response feels really triggered they're starting to freak out a little bit they are exhibiting signs of either freezing, um, fleeing, fighting, fawning, you know, whatever, any of those. And I heard this on a podcast a couple of weeks ago, so I wanted to draw attention to that podcast. I mentioned it in the other live as well. It's Will Derude, D-E space R-O-O-D-E. Um, I can't find much about him online, but this podcast was so amazing. I will link it below and I really recommend if you are interested in things like this to check it out. It's really, really good. I'm actually getting a trauma certification through the place that he was certified at now. Um, so yeah, this information comes from him and from that podcast and a bit of my own research as well. So when someone is triggered in front of you, the inclination initially at least for me and for people who have who like care about other people and who especially like the more you care about them i think the more this instinctual response comes through and it's the response of over caregiving of like wanting to save them of wanting to to get them really quickly out of their state of discomfort of feeling really uncomfortable with their discomfort being basically pulled and sucked into their emotional experience instead of maintaining your sense of boundary and regulating your nervous system in the process. So over care giving or over care taking, it's like an automatic response for a lot of people, which makes a lot of sense. Like we want to help people who are having a hard time, who are injured, who we can visibly see are stressed or going through something like we, we, all of our attention starts to turn away from ourselves and towards them. And this can be problematic for a number of reasons. One being when you are pulled into someone else's stress bubble, when you start to abandon your own like internal resources and sense of um, centeredness in yourself to turn your attention towards them and try to save them. You, your like nervous system is now also experiencing a kind of stress response. And so now instead of getting this person to regulate their nervous system, you know, one person's nervous system being in dysregulation now there's two people's nervous systems in dysregulation and there's this feedback thing that can happen where that person who's having a stressful time, a triggering, you know, they're being triggered by something, they are now seeing you coming to them and, and being triggered by them being triggered and stressing out or drawing to their attention that they're freaking out and like, you know, it's like the 
the whole vibe changes. It's like, what's going on? Like, tell me what's going on. How can I help you? What can I get for you? What can I do? Blah, blah, blah. And so they're now aware of something is happening that now other people in the space or just that one other person is starting to freak out. And so they start to think at times, doesn't happen every time, but they can start to think that they now have to manage your nervous system as well. So there's this like, you know, our nervous systems and just our, we're always kind of like communicating with each other in these like deeper and more somatic based ways with between humans. And when a heightened event, a heightened emotional event is occurring like that where someone gets triggered, they're in a state, you know, they can be in a state of freeze and not actually fully be like conscious of what's going on. They're just having the experience and they're being present with that experience. So they're just in the experiencing of it. And then when someone comes in and starts to be like, oh my God, are you okay? What's going on? It can force them to step out of that experiencing of it in order to get through it and start to have to be aware of the other person and like, oh God, is there something wrong? Is there something going on? So I hope you kind of get like the picture of that and how that kind of works. So what to do when you are anxiously concerned about another person because you just want them to feel good. You just want to take them out of discomfort. And this is a really important thing that I touched upon last time is that in our society, we are very resistant to feelings of discomfort, to um, any feelings that we deem or perceive as bad, as not joyful or calm and content, like any feelings like anger, irritation, um, you know, anxiety, stress, fear, we immediately want to take ourselves out of those feelings and then of course other people out of those feelings as well and discomfort is a part of being a human it's you know the range of emotion there's a huge range of emotions that we have to embrace and accept as humans because they're just a part of our makeup and actually resisting those things that feel uncomfortable grow those feelings and make it harder to to work through and to get out of actually so there's this like stuckness that can occur, this like stickiness when we're in resistance to emotions that are natural to us as humans. Um, so yeah, when someone else is in a stress response, they are triggered, they're going through something and they're experiencing it in that present moment, they're having a trauma response, a stress response. Instead of our mind going like them, 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 we want to train our mind to come back to ourselves and hold ourselves in a ventral vagus response. And I went through this in the last video, but there are different parts of the vagus nerve that govern or um, control different aspects of how we react to certain things. And the ventral vagus response is the social one it's it's the relaxed one it's the rest and digest it's you're you're open you're expansive you're communicative you're calm you're safe it's being in that safe space and when we are able to train our minds to come back in moments that you know externally are stressful train ourselves to come back to that place of openness, relaxation, but also it's a place that is boundaried. And what I mean by that is like the stress, other people's shit basically can't like come past a certain level where we are maintaining this sense of safety and centeredness and security in ourselves that kind of nothing outside of us in that moment can like really fluctuate that sense of center distance safety in ourselves and this is so healing for people who are in that stress response because it's almost like i think of it like creating a safe space for people to feel unsafe when people are getting triggered and they're stressed you want to like 
Yeah, I think of it like wrapping them up in safety in your own sense of safety and letting them go through their own response. And this is hard. Like, this is something I work on almost like daily in my life, I would say. Like, it's really hard to hold that place of safety and centeredness in yourself, especially if you're like highly sensitive when other people are reacting and going through something difficult but really this is like such medicine for people who are triggered it's having that true genuine safe space for them in that moment that they feel unsafe just a place where they are allowed to experience what they're going through without judgment without tons of questioning without the feedback of now you being stressed out about it um and this is the basis of like self regulation right and again it's not easy so if that person who's being triggered they're in a stress response in that moment that they are experiencing that response they may not be ready to connect everyone's different and so again like allowing for that space that openness that non-judgment that safety for them to experience what they're experiencing without getting so involved in their like energetic field and what's going on in their brains and and in their minds that you are just like holding this space and then they can come back when they're ready when they're through that you know thanks in part to you holding that space for them to just be there with them in that when they feel unsafe, but you are a safe person to be unsafe with, um, to have feelings of unsafety with, I should say, something like that. Um, so yeah, you know, then they can come back later when they're ready and you can connect, you know, in different ways about what happened and then how to um, work through things like that. But I think about how the role of a coach a counselor it's so important because these are people who are trained to be non-biased and non-judgmental hopefully you know a good coach or therapist is non-judgmental and non-biased but there's this you know we can help you regulate these stress responses because we we have that training to hold that kind of safe space in situations so you can experience what you need to experience those feelings of unsafety and actually work your way through them let yourself feel them fully and then still have someone there witnessing and also just being really present and safe and again non-judgmental um, so i wanted to just kind of end this talk with this practice i learned through my trauma-informed training and it's so simple it's the most simple thing but i i felt like this profound feeling of peace and stillness and centeredness when i started to practice it and i bring it into my sessions with people when someone is experiencing um yeah feelings of being triggered because we talk about hard stuff in trauma-informed coaching like really really hard heavy stuff and so holding that space is so crucial and to not get sucked into their story but maintain that the boundary but hold that loving space for them like that in itself is so transformative without anything else that we do in a session like that is super super important it's the foundation of the sessions for me at least um so it's this kind of breathing called heart-based breathing and it makes me think of so i teach yoga as well and it's so funny to think about like um how yoga teachers myself included can like describe certain like things to focus on or bodily processes or visualizations and I think about like when I tell students or when other teachers tell students like breathe into your feet or like breathe into you know into the the discomfort like what does that even mean obviously it's more like visual using your imagination and bringing your attention and focus to that space imagining you are sending the breath through that area you know so 
heart-based breathing is you are imagining that you are breathing through your heart. So when you exhale, you're imagining that you know, you're drawing your attention to heart, your heart. If you are someone who's like not super connected to your body, like if I say, um, you know, draw your attention to your toes and like the tingly sensation in the toes and just like the temperature of the floor underneath you and you're like, I don't know what that means. I always just recommend like just touching that part of your body, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever part of the body that we're bringing the awareness to. So yeah, just kind of like gently, you can gently tap you know, you can gently like rub that part of your body or just like find connection in some way. So imagining with your inhale that you are drawing the breath into your heart. And when you exhale, you are releasing it from the heart. So simple. And when you are in a situation where you are feeling pulled into someone else's shit, someone else is having some kind of triggering response, emotional response, you can first just notice wanting to jump to their rescue. Take a second and just do this breathing. Like even if it's just one round or like one inhale that you imagine coming into your heart and going out of your heart, and this kind of breathing regulates our heart rate. It allows for some relaxation in the body. I mean, obviously everyone's reaction to something like this is gonna be different. For some people, this might not work at all. That's totally fine, take it or leave it. For me, it's a really, really simple way to connect back to yourself in a situation that feels that like feels you could be drawn into the stress easily or start to over care give like want to save people and yeah it's so much just about self-regulation and learning how to be that safe person and that in itself is so healing to so many people it's really what we need are more people who can hold that kind of space. So yeah, heart-based breathing, really simple. Breathing, imagining you are breathing in and out of the heart space. Just a couple minutes of this, even a couple of rounds, even just a second can be really amazing and incredible. So hopefully this was helpful and take care of yourselves. Talk soon.